A small country with a great heart. Its spectacular beauty boasts castles and glens, its history, warriors and poets. But of all of Scotland's gifts, undoubtedly the most famous and most appreciated is single malt whiskey. That magical dram that conjures up visions of solitary pipers in mist-filled glens. All right. I'm Don Ferguson, and that's me, the daft one in the hat, learning how to Scottish dance. Stay with me for the next hour, and I'll take you on a whiskey trail. It suits you. You'll see how this stuff, peat, barley, water, and the clear Scottish air, combine to make the marvelous elixir the Scots call Ishkabaha the water of life. The art of whiskey making has been handed down for generations and is now Scotland's greatest ambassador. Our journey begins here in Toronto, where the Companions of the Quick, a single malt society, congregate to praise and honor that noblest of spirits and the ceremonial whiskey cup, the Quake. The Companions of the Quake are an eclectic group who share a passion for single malt whiskey. We meet uh, regularly in Toronto and taste uh, different single malts from different uh, sources. We, we bill it as 20% uh, education and 80% fun. Fun indeed. After dinner and especially the tasting, I'm ready for anything. And tonight, it's Mr. Whiskey himself, Jim McEwen, head distiller at Brookladdy Distillery. So I really want you to do this toast with me. <laughs> Thank you. So you take the whiskey, you push the glass away from you three times, and you look at it straight in the eye like a mean dog. And you push it away and you say, Machlish! Then you bring it towards you three times, and you say the words, Stalish! Stay-lish! Every two years, this refined and distinguished group, the Companions of the Quake, make a pilgrimage to the wellspring of single malt whiskey, Scotland. It's 9 a.m. and the companions are getting anxious. They've been in Scotland for 45 minutes and haven't had a dram yet. Everyone piles in the bus and we head straight to the closest distillery, a mere 20 minutes from Glasgow Airport. Auchentoshan. Auchentoshan is one of 84 distilleries still operating in Scotland, where single malt lovers are welcome to visit, talk to the experts, and see firsthand the craftsmen plying their ancient trade. Auchentoshan is a classic lowland single malt whiskey. It's the only distillery in Scotland that triple distills. This means they're producing a light, smooth, and very pure single malt. Auchentoshan is a good malt for someone just starting out on their single malt appreciation career. So what is single malt whiskey? A single malt whiskey is the product of a single distillery. It's made from malted barley, water and yeast. We don't drink single malt whiskey, we taste it. It's for sipping and savoring. There are four simple steps to tasting and enjoying single malt whiskey. Well, we call them the four S's. The first S is C. Observe the clarity and purity of the whiskey. The second S is smell. Here you will capture the aroma and the distinctive top characteristics of the malt. The third S is sip. You take a little of the whiskey and let it evaporate on the tongue. Fill the palate, detect the flavors. The fourth S is swallow. That will give you the aftertaste, the finish as it's called.
Here we are, an hour and a half north of Glasgow. Look at this view, Loch Tulla. It's absolutely spectacular to think that this country, which is so unspoiled, so vast, has these incredible sites where there's nobody. OK, so we're not alone. Hundreds of thousands of travelers visit Scotland every year, and tens of thousands of them are whiskey tourists. From organized bus trips to hikers and bikers, they're all seeking the source of the water of life. Our sound man, Salvatore, is convinced the secret lies in the water. I say it's the mountain air. That's beautiful, God. Hey. Stay with us and decide for yourself on the Whiskey Trail. We'll see you in the water. It's a great coach. Is it? Yeah. That's right, it's a coach, not a bus. It's a coach. Oh, yeah. I'll put you back there, Dad. All right, is everything's okay, okay? John Patterson is our driver and confidant, but don't call his coach a bus. Buses stop at bus stops. Coaches don't. I was on the phone to Jeannie to see how things were back home. John has been driving tourists around the highlands and lowlands of Scotland for more than 18 years. He's friendly, funny, knowledgeable, and professional. The perfect designated driver for these malt-mad companions. This person hiding here <laughs> is the convener of the Ottawa chapter, but she doesn't drink whiskey. I do. Well, I know you do now. You're in training here. I'm in training, yes. Right. How many did you have yesterday? Just the three? Just three, I think. Yes, just the three. How many the day before? Uh, how many distilleries did we go to? I think I only had one the day before, perhaps. Yeah. This pilgrimage isn't going to live on whiskey alone, so the conversation naturally comes around to the most famous dish in Scottish cuisine, haggis. So you've had haggis two or three times. I'm curious to know, uh, is, are the haggis, does it always taste the same? Or do or haggis have different styles, like whiskeys have different styles? It's quite styles? different, actually. Oh. First time I had it, it was literally the sheep's stomach around it, and I had to fight my way through it to get to the, the haggis in the middle. <laughs> fight <laughs> your way now, through to get to the disappointment. <laughs> After traveling dry all day, we can't wait for a little hands-on research. What's your favorite whiskey? Talisker. Talisker. Well, let's have, let's have a little bit of... Get me a Talisker. What's that going to be, three pounds? Three pounds. <laughs> Each single malt has its own unique and distinct taste. Half the fun for a single malt drinker is describing its character. Okay. So, now this whiskey is the local one from the... Uh, Distillery the close. This is the uh, the Pulteney Distillery. Now tell me, just have a quick, have a quick a nosing of that. And then we're going to compare it to the Talisker, which is the, the barman's favorite. So is that the Talisker? The experts say Talisker yes, explodes yeah. on the tongue, then slowly descends to a wonderful spice and peppery, peaty finish that lasts and lasts. It's more more peaty. Tal Talisker seems to have more peat. Talisker regarded not so much a drink as an experience. Oh. I've seen me drink 18 whiskeys in 15 minutes. 18 whiskeys in 15 minutes? Really? It was a good night. I had a cold. I didn't feel that at all well. You know, that's all I just thought. I went out. I went out. I had, I had that whiskeys. A few beers afterwards. I was drunk. But yeah. see you next morning. I felt great. <laughs> Oh, I wish I felt great when I woke up the next morning to sunshine on the Isle of Skye with a little too much Talisker on my mind. Talisker is the only distillery on the Isle of Skye. Like all single malt whiskey, it's stored in oak casks for over 10 years. Well, welcome to Talisker. Um, you can see the glorious setting that Talisker is set in. Sorry, that was my cleaning lady. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely for Shara, yeah. Welcome to Talisco. That was my brother. <laughs> <laughs> 
you ready. <laughs> Welcome to Talisco. You can see the beautiful setting of the distillery of Talisco here, close to the sea. And the sea itself actually helps with part of the marine character that you will actually detect in the single malt Talisco itself. The distillery has been operating since 1830. It was completely rebuilt in 1960 and is now part of Diageo's Classic Six. While every distillery looks basically like every other and the processes are all basically the same, no two distilleries are alike. One of the first things you notice when you come to a distillery it's not what you see, it's what you smell. Mmm, malting barley and yeast, which aids the fermentation. Barley and malt. A distillery smells like a bakery with attitude. Traditionally, the barley is steeped in water for two or three days, and then spread on a malting floor where it starts to germinate. It's turned regularly to enable even development. After about five days, when the starch and the barley has turned to fermentable sugar, the germination is stopped by putting the green malt in a kiln to dry out. The traditional fuel, peat. The smoke from the peat gives the whiskey its characteristic taste. Talisker, the golden spirit of sky, one of the world's great single malt whiskies. So what is the island tour of? I mean, I mean of the island, tour obviously. of the but... island, <laughs> <laughs> Take a note of that. Island? An island tour is a tour of the island. <laughs> <laughs> Sky is a part of the Inner Hebrides and is the most scenically spectacular island on the western seaboard. At the Lube Folk Museum, travelers can experience the period dwellings where the crofters of Sky once lived, where the first whiskies were made. Sound man Salvatore was getting hungry. He was convinced there was a McDonald's around here somewhere. He does have a nose for these things. Duntoon Castle, traditional home of the Clan MacDonald. Built in the 15th century and abandoned in the 18th because, according to legend, the heir to the throne was dropped from an upstairs window and died. It was considered such an evil omen, the MacDonalds abandoned the place and conquered the world. Here we are at the very first Mickey D's and there's not a quarter pounder with cheese to be found anywhere. Oh, Sal was crushed. Hang on, here's some beef for you, Sal. Take a bite out of that. Stay with us while we continue on our journey along the whiskey trail. Just after 3.30 in the afternoon, we've been driving pretty much all day. We left the Isle of Skye this morning, we've been driving through the highlands, and finally, we've arrived here too, at the edge of the North Sea. We took a ferry even further north to the Orkney Islands. Ancient civilizations flourished here 5,000 years ago, but today, there's whiskey. Here we are at Highland Park, 
the northernmost distillery in Scotland. Highland Park is another world-famous single malt. It's known for its peaty, young, heathery character, which comes from this stuff, peat. And we use three kind of different qualities here. You can see there's a lot of heather roots in this bit. And this gives us that heather honey flavor. The heat dries the malt enough so it can be ground to a coarse flour called grist, grist for the mill. This sweet flour is then mixed with hot water to extract the sugars in a mash tun. This sweet liquid is then transferred to a pine vessel called a washback, where yeast is added to start a chemical reaction. And fermentation begins here. After bubbling away for 48 hours, we have what's called a wash, with the alcohol content similar to beer. From the most northerly distillery in the world, we head south to the cutest distillery in the world, Edredour. Well, we've seen some pretty big distilleries, but this one is completely at the other end of the scale. This is the smallest Scotch distillery in the world. Uh, everything is in one room. Look at this, the both stills, look how small they are compared to what we've been seeing so far. It's like a little whiskey village. First distillation, second distillation, and there's what they call the spirit safe. Smallest one we've ever seen. <laughs> Edra Dower is extremely difficult to come by. This Highland malt is a must-have for any serious collector. You have a bottle of this in your collection in Toronto? In Cornwall. In Cornwall, yeah. Yes, I do. In the Edra Dower, I also have the House of Lords because I was here in 1995 and purchased a bottle of House of Lords uh, as well as the Edward that's Hour. The that's yes, that's right. But what makes it unique is it's not available anywhere except in London at the Parliament and here in this store. We bought a peasant. <laughs> Did you really? Yes. yes. We bought it for Roger. Oh, good. <laughs> and we'd like Roger to step right up and because you've not been paying sufficient attention to him, we want to make him an honorary Scot, and we have a gift for him. <laughs> and he will become Roger McBile! <laughs> Roger McBile, nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, hey, that's a lot of crap. <laughs> OK, someone hold this. Here we go. Yeah, well, well, let me put this on. <laughs> oh, over your ears. Oh, yes. Yes. Over the ears, yes. 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 It suits you. <laughs> well, we may have lost John Morgan, but we're not that. Oh, get stuffed. <laughs> I'm only a beginner, and we have classes once a week. You're kidding. Do, us, do a step for us. We have no idea. OK, here we go. <laughs> That's a what? A pot of boss. A pot of boss. Can I quit? Right, that's good. Yeah. And then you bring your foot up behind you. Okay. okay. Right, and then we go. So. All right. All right. We're dancing. All right. We're Scottish now. On my toes? On your toes, yeah. Further south lies a region crowded with single malt whiskey distilleries, Speyside. Cardew, described as a classy malt, uncomplicated, unpeated, smooth and clean, and famed for its alliance with Johnny Walker brands. There's Johnny Walker going in and he's, he's Johnny Stagger coming home. <laughs> yes. Cardew is the only distillery that was pioneered by a woman. This woman, Ellen Cummins, ran a bootleg distillery here for 10 years. She went legit in 1824. From these humble beginnings come one of the most recognized single malt whiskeys in the world, Cardew. Single malt whiskey is distilled in a pot still made from copper. When heated, the alcohol separates from the wash and rises to the neck. 
where it is condensed into what is called low wines. These low wines are distilled once again to create spirit, then to the spirit safe. And when you're making whiskey, you know you try to find the middle cut. You're trying to find the heart of the whiskey. What you do is, in the second distillation, as the alcohol is running through, you just take a glass, put it under the spout there, you take a measured amount, and you add an equal amount of spring water. It must be spring water. And when you add the water, the spirit will go cloudy, like Pernod Ricard or Pastis. It goes cloudy. And you keep nosing it, keep adding the water. And there comes a wonderful moment when you add the water. It stays absolutely clear. You have found the heart. And then suddenly, you're on to whiskey. The new spirit must sit in a cask for three years before it can be called Scotch whiskey. However, to mature correctly as a single malt, it will lay sleeping in the barrels for at least 10 years, sometimes many years more. Shh! This is where the whiskey sleeps. So this cask is number 4087, manufactured in 1994, and it contained, when it was filled, 249 litres. I'll bet you it doesn't contain 249 litres now. That is the old way of marking casks. They have decided there's a more efficient way. Now, if you have a look at this one here, all they do is the barcode. Put it through the barcode machine. So if I, there you go. If I took this to Safeway or something like that, how much would I have to pay? Uh, nothing, for you wouldn't get into Safeway. <laughs> Their barcode wouldn't read it. Well, and you wouldn't, wouldn't, get, you, you wouldn't get out of the distillery. <laughs> and uh, I suppose if I just sat down here and pulled my hat down and blended in, they might leave me in for the night. Who knows? So we know the age of the whiskey in the cask or bottle, but in the glass? Now, how you tell the age of a whiskey within reason is to observe the legs. Roll the whiskey around the glass, hold it up, and observe how long it takes to trickle back down the inside of the glass. The slower the legs, the older the whiskey. All that's left to do now is taste. So, we paid a visit to Glen Morangy. We have three Glen Morangy whiskeys here. We have the whiskey aged in Madeira, Sherry, and Port. Do you know about how we, we come by those no. good finishes? No. Well, of course, we always mature Glen Morangy and bourbon cast first. Mm -hmm. So up to 10, 11, 12 years, we take the spirit from the bourbon and put it into a cast which has held port wine and leave it there for another two years. <laughs> the age-old question, water to add it or not? Excellent. That's sufficient to open up the flavors of the whiskey. Well, first of all, it's, it really seems to open it up. It does. And exactly. it softens Two it. Words. It softens yes. it. Mm -hmm. it. Takes away that initial bite, and it opens up mm -hmm. the flavors. That's right. So you're... Just by adding that little spot mm -hmm. of water. OK, well, this, I'll put this one aside, because I want to move on to this one is the sherry. That, that was, was the sherry. That this was the Madeira, the sherry. The sherry. All right. <coughs> oh. Just joking. Oh. <laughs> I got you good. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> on the bus, grooving through the tranquil Scottish countryside. But there was a time when it wasn't so peaceful. Across the road from us here is the famous Dunrobin Castle, family seat of the Sutherland clan. This dude here is the second Duke of Sutherland, who's described as being much loved by his tenantry and who was a wise and judicious man who held out a helping hand to those who were in distress. Nothing could be further from the truth. The first Duke of Sutherland has been called the Joseph Stalin of Scotland. Thanks to him, 15,000 of his tenants were thrown off the land during the Highland clearances 
so that he could have the property all for himself. And what a property it was. 1.3 million acres belonged to the Sutherland clan. Today, it's a must-see for the tourists with extensive botanical gardens and a world-class aviary. Can you put your hand there? Oh, that's good. I'm just going to tie this guy okay. onto there. Then if he flies away, he'll take you with him. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, this is a falconer's knot in equestrian circles. Everything's going to be done one-handed when you're a falconer. And uh, often, if we had two hands, we'd, three hands, we'd just carry two hands. No, this guy's Falconry is 4,000 years old and has been practised in this area for centuries. In fact, Sutherland County and its neighbours offer the best red grouse hawking in the world. And um, what I'll do is I'll get him to turn round if I can, so he's facing and you're more comfortable. Every year, falconers migrate here to practice their ancient sport. And they have a falcon good time. <laughs> no trip to Scotland would be complete without a visit to its most famous landmark, Edinburgh Castle. Every year, tens of thousands of people visit the hallowed courtyards of this medieval stronghold. Set high on a craggy volcanic rock, it's the perfect place to take in the panorama of Edinburgh. Edinburgh is a modern city that celebrates its history. The old and the new blend together like a good scotch. This place is like a page from a Dickens story. Butcher, baker, hand brush maker. Although we came to explore the whiskey trail, I had a secret agenda. Another rare Scottish culinary delight, guaranteed to produce gastronomic delirium. But we won't find it in a gourmet shop. We want to know, have you ever heard of a deep fried Mars bar? No, I haven't heard. You haven't heard of it? No. So you wouldn't be able to tell us where to get one then? <laughs> okay. I'm afraid now, my friend. Right. We've heard you get deep fried Mars bars in Scotland. Okay. I say I only had it in Ireland, so I don't know. Have you heard of a deep fried Mars bar? <laughs> oh, no, no. Never heard of one? Never no. heard of one. Oh, oh, oh I know. God. Down the high street. Down the high street. On the right hand side. Past St. Um, St. Mary Street. And there's a notice in the window. Bye. It says deep fried Mars, Mars bars. Here. How far down is that? Uh, it's about a 10 minute walk. 10 minute walk. Uh -huh. All but right. It's on the right hand side. <laughs> finding the perfect Mars bar. We've been told that if we go down the high street here and we get to St. Mary Street, on that side of the street, we're gonna find a fish and chip cafe that's gonna do for us a deep fried Mars bar. It's called Benny's and it's just down here. Well, we finally got here. Benny's, fish and chips, and look at this. We sell Mars bars in batter. And guess what? It's closed. <laughs> I had a 
of you about 300 yards on the left hand side the clam shell i think the name of the fish and chip ship shop is and it's on yeah. the high street here yes uh, no well yes the high street's only part of the royal mile right but it's on this yeah, street about 300 yards up on the left Bless okay you. oh <laughs> my kind of guy <laughs> be good. could this be it the end of my culinary quest can the clamshell deliver? Can you do a deep fried Mars bar? Yes. Excellent. This yes. is what we're looking for. Okay. Where it's not frozen. No frozen. Not frozen. Fresh yes. Mars bar. Open it. Uh huh. Stick the butter. Stick it. Let's, let's make sure we see that. Yes. Stick it in the batter. You got that? Yes. Yeah. Do that. Put in the fryer. Drop it in the fryer. Yes. Wait till it comes up there. After all the work we did, yes. here we are at the clamshell. Yes. The clamshell is open and does deep fried Mars bars. How long does it take? Two minutes. Two minutes. Time of the butts go hard, that's it. Uh -huh. okay, let's have this presented. Okay. There we go. There it is, the deep fried Mars bar. Now, you wouldn't have a can of iron brew to go with that, would you? Yes. I think, I think we've reached the culinary heaven here in Edinburgh. Go, boys, go, go, go. Get the voice, they're cute. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I can't even talk. <laughs> I need the iron bro. This is Scotland's other national drink. If you're too young to drink whiskey, you turn to iron brew. The nose it. Mm -hmm. But the aromas, it's kind of cream soda and orange in sucrose glucose is what I'm getting. Well, it's not much of an antidote. <laughs> If I die of hardening of the arteries before I leave Scotland, I wouldn't be surprised. Heaven, heaven. Want some? Want some? We tried it and he liked it. I didn't like it. Come to Scotland, it's definitely worth it's not, trying it's, once it's, anyway. I mean, it's so. a novelty thing, you know, but mm -hmm. um, it's not, I wouldn't say it's like every Scottish person eats them because it's just, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough trying to satisfy my sweet tooth. Let's get back to the whiskey trail, the island of distilleries, next. <laughs> Told me of a place that once would never sleep. On the west of Scotland, lies a small island with a big reputation for single malt whiskey, How Isla. Sleeping beauty lies trapped in slumber deep. At one time, there were eight distilleries working on this island, producing some of the most distinctly flavored single malt in Scotland. Isla survives on whiskey and tourism. Standing on the island of distilleries, you can almost see the coast of heaven. This man on my right-hand side is a fellow by the name of Jim McEwen. Yes. Jim, Jim is uh, loved at home and revered abroad because he is Mr. Whiskey. Out of this whole world, he is Mr. Whiskey. Worked under the finest fellows who ever worked in distilleries. They passed all their knowledge and skills to Jim, and he went up from Cooper to Maltman, rising all the time, learning everything, and producing wonderful whiskey. Jim McEwen had a dream, the Brookladdy Distillery. A distillery that had stood silent for eight years its peat fires cold, copper stills empty, its future very much in doubt. So when I came through the gates on the 7th of January and I looked at the mess, 
moment. I tell you, my heart sank. But this little guy, John, he had been incarcerated here for eight years, totally ignored by everybody, quietly looking after the cast, him and another guy. Nobody came near them. I knew within 10 minutes we could move a mountain. The passion and the, and the enthusiasm that these people had just to see this distillery open again. And I knew within 10 minutes we could do anything. With no shortage of passion himself, McEwen has worked miracles at Brookladdy. He's raised millions of pounds to get it back in good working nick. So he started, and all the bells start zipping, and on it just worked perfectly. And millions more to pay for all that stock sleeping in the warehouses. Mr. Whiskey, or Lord of the Isles, as he's also known, is a walking metaphor of Scotland today. A blend of old world tradition and craftsmanship and new age design, technology, and marketing. If you look at it's got a really beautiful tapered waist and a very, very long neck the size of the still. And then if you look at the top of the still, that is probably the most classic swan's neck stills I have seen ever. You see the way In the short time that Brook Laddie has been back in business, it's won a long list of international accolades. We won Distillery of the Year last year in America. Our 20-year-old was voted best single malt in the world by the Scottish jury. I was very lucky I was voted Distiller of the Year. So we're now going from strength to strength. We're now employing 21 people on site. A lot of these were young unemployed islanders. So they're in here working with us now. So we're giving hope uh, for jobs. Isla whiskey is renowned for its peaty flavor. It's not necessarily for the beginner. Usually, you're either with it or against it. Isla and smoky peat go hand in hand. Everywhere on Isla, you see peat banks extending for miles. On such a small island, how does each distillery remain distinct from the next? Do they use different kinds of peat? Of course, the peat doesn't vary in flavor on Isla. It does vary from the peat to the north of Sweden or mainland Scotland. It's the amount on Isla that we use that makes a difference. So we're all using different amounts. The other characteristic of Isla malts is the salty sea air that relentlessly blows over the warehouses, imparting a strong marine flavor to the sleeping barrels. But more, the oldest distillery on the island has stood on the shores of Loch Indal since 1779. And for the companions of the quake, it's a real treat to taste. But what's hidden in the cellars? Under lock and key in a secret cabinet. One of the most expensive malts in the world. The Bamor 40-year-old. <laughs> 48 grand. This would be up now. <laughs> Whoa. Four thousand pounds a bottle, nearly six thousand five hundred U.S. dollars. Well, it does come in a nice box. No. Fellas, what we're going to do, I've still got the key. So we're going <laughs> to slip back in when things are quiet tonight. We'll say we're going down to look at the fire. We'll nip in and just see if it's as good as they say. That 40-year-old? Yes. Oh, my goodness. We'll see if it's as good as they say. Isla is a magical combination of land, sea, air, and water unique in the world and produces exceptionally fine single malts. Ardbeg, Lafroig, Banahaben, and Coal Ila, and the silent distillery of Port Ellen. Not forgetting one of the heaviest and most pungent Isla malts, the legendary Lagavulin. Isla malts, like the rest of Scotland, are stored in large oak casks. Although Brook Laddie really sat nice silent for years, the warehouses were still stocked full of whiskey. You can see the color of that? Oh, my goodness. Oh, no place. It's a beautiful color. But remember, it is uh, 
And also, I think I've taught you something. If you really want to check the strength of whiskey and you don't carry a hydrometer, which most of us don't, and somebody pours you a whiskey at home and you find yourself, you're just getting a little bit tipsy and you're wondering why you're getting tipsy, because you've only had a couple of whiskeys, you're probably drinking cast strength whiskey and you didn't know it. The way to find that out is just take the glass and turn your back on your host, put your hand over the glass like that, just simply go like that three times. And if there's ring, a ring of pearls, we call this a ring of pearls. That tells me that the whiskey is over 50%. When you get below 50%, you do not get a ring of pearls. The stronger you get more rings of pearls. Just now I'm getting three rings of pearls, which would indicate it's clearly about 56, 57%. So that's a simple trick to work out the strength of whiskey. While whiskey is maturing in the casks, the wood breathes, and the liquid inside evaporates, about 2% per year. In Scotland, they call this the angel share. Now, we've all heard of the angel share. Well, let's just check how much the angels have taken, right? Let's see what happens here. Let me see. There it is there. You got it? Well, let's take that down. Wow. So I'm down to there. So when people ask about why is single malt whiskey so expensive, Excellent. If this was cognac, and cognac it will fill up the cask every year, we are not allowed to do that. So you can see all I've got left in this cask is that little bit there. Jim has brought Brook Laddie back to life. And what a life, and what a future. Jim's plans not only include making great whiskey here, but also building a hotel, a pub, a visitor center, and a whiskey academy. That's right. You can come to Brook Laddie and be taught how to make single malt by Mr. Whiskey himself. That whole wall is going to be white. You come in on a Sunday and you kick off on a Monday morning and you leave the following Saturday and you will actually have made whiskey by hand. If you want to take it further, come back the next year and I'll take you higher. And if you want to go further, come back another year and I'll make you a master of malt. I'll say to you, there's a the key, go and make me whiskey. With all these wonderful whiskies, from the highlands to the lowlands, from Speyside to the islands. It's no wonder single malt whiskey is blazing a trail of its own. What we're trying to do here is just create a, a clan of single malt drinkers. So we have got young guys from Germany. Sitting here, there's people from Denmark, people from Canada, old guys from Scotland, young people. So there's no really clear indication of a, a single malt drinker. But what I find about single malt drinkers is people who respect quality. It's all about quality. They respect quality, they respect craftsmanship, and I think that's what's been the, the success of single malt. Many products have risen and fallen, but single malt continues, and blended whiskey continue to rise all the time. Here I stand again, after years have gone by, with a brewer cladi in my hand once more. It reminds me of the magic of a moonlit sky The way it catches light The smells of summer nights And the sea that touches the Bruchladi shore And the moon smiles kindly on the western seas Perfume tumbles on the midnight breeze Standing on the island of distilleries, you can almost see the coast of heaven. So we come away from Scotland with a keener appreciation of single malt, but also of the country itself. Hospitable, good humor, and warm. Where the old and new dwell comfortably side by side. <laughs> you keep it quiet over there, we're trying to shoot a movie. <laughs> That's the true spirit that lies at the heart of its single malts. <laughs>
All right, Jimmy. He's a pint. He's a pint and a fag.